All right, the uh, the college football playoff recap is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information on all of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. Let's jump into it. Um, Notre Dame got absolutely housed. We'll we'll go on and jump into that. Alabama wins forty five to thirty four over Oklahoma. Uh, Clemson beats Notre Dame thirty to three. Uh, I mean, look, you and I were both dead wrong on Notre Dame. Yeah, I and and when you look at the game and you look at how Ian Book played and whatnot, I I thought we both thought that. Notre Dame was better equipped to be able to hang in this game. That's right. I thought st- stylistically their offense should have been able to dink and dunk and and get short yardage plays, take time off the clock, keep Clemson's offense on the other side, uh, and take away that massive pass rush because they're not going down the field. It's almost as if Notre Dame said, no, we're going to go at what Clemson is good at. Yeah, it instead of seem... attacking what Clemson might have as a weakness, but they, they don't have a power back. They don't have like a, a big time running back, and they haven't all year. Like Dexter no, Williams but you don't have to. Fine. You don't have to in in big time college football anymore. No, no, you don't at all. It, now Dan Wolken tweeted and said that Ian Book is just not good, and I don't know that he's not good. I I think he is completely and totally serviceable. Right? I think I I wonder. Watching the game, or I wondered, I still wonder, um, was the moment too big for Book? No, nah, I don't believe that. I mean, I, I think Clemson, I think the game plan for Notre Dame was was just bad. Trying to take deep passes that take a long time for routes to develop is just not smart against Clemson's front. Yeah. That's just not smart. That's not Book's call. Book, now they, this now, is not the NFL where where a star quarterback calls the plays in the huddle. On the, on here, the okay? other side, on the other side of this, uh, Book did have some open receivers that he just missed. He missed, but when you're getting pressured the way he was getting pressured, yeah, no, you're right. That's not. I mean, I've always believed that you all you build a team from the line forward, oh, and yeah. if I and if you told me you have to scrap one position and just be bad at it, what would it be? Even in the day of throwing, I would scrap secondary if i have to scrap one i would scrap it because a great pass rush can mitigate any secondary flaws you have yeah now clemson doesn't have many secondary flaws guys did get open but it doesn't matter if book is on his butt he can't hit them yeah now you're you're right so about that, that i i and maybe i'm giving him too much of a pass i was not unimpressed with book at all i don't blame him for the the lack of of the offense being able to move um, I think the, the game plan was bad, and I think Clemson executed flawlessly. Yeah. I I, I don't think they did anything to try to help Book in any way. Now, he made mistakes, but that's what's going to happen when you get pressured and hit and pressured and hit and pressured and hit. Nobody stays calm and cool in those situations. Now, you're right. I mean, at the greatest level, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, you pressure and hit those guys – they make mistakes also, and they're the oh, best yeah. to ever play the game. Well, and it's you're talking about a, a the pressure. Kid, the a pressure got ramped kid. up early on in the like not early on, but in the second quarter, right? So it was well, still a, a big game, yeah. and and everything was fine. And now we we obviously can't get away from the fact that there were four reviews that all went in Clemson's favor. Um. And that's not to say that they shouldn't have, because if you go back and look at the film, like, obviously, all right. But you, you figure Notre Dame gets at least one of those. Yeah. They can at least buy a touchdown somewhere. That's right. And they could get nothing going. And I was I was really shocked that they – I mean, they're – I thought their defense played fairly well. Uh, no, I think they did too. At some point in time, you just get gassed. Yeah. I mean, they just could not – the offense couldn't stay on the field. Absolutely. And – the defense is not deep enough. Well, nobody's to, defense is. No, 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 not at all. Um, but it just uh, – some of the catches that the Clemson receivers were making, Trevor Lawrence played a really good ball game. Yep. Really good ball game. He is everything that everybody has said that he is. Uh, and we saw it against lesser competition. I but think this says more to about get, Clemson maybe than it does about Notre Dame. Totally. Completely agree with that. It is impossible, and maybe all the Clemson fans out there, congratulations, you've got a great team and you've got a great quarterback. But 
But I, forgive me if I don't believe in what I see when I see you beat the hell out of this year's Florida State team and Louisville and Pitt. Yeah. And these, like, I just don't care. Yeah. I, I don't care that you blew those teams out because I think with lesser talent that you have, if you put Ian Book on that team, I think Clemson still blows those teams out. Yeah. Like, if you swap offensive talent, they still blow them out because they're bad teams. Yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, it's we saw Pitt get beat, what, 51-6 to six by Penn State? Yeah. And and Penn State is good, but we don't put them in the same class as Clemson, so it, it's like – And eh. Notre Dame played Pitt close. And and but uh, but so that's why same, I never look at like at, I never compare I don't games I, because it's all completely circumstantial. That's it. Well, right? and you don't know what the other team is trying to do. If you're if you got some injuries and once you have a team in a game in hand, you're starting to sub guys in and you're not worried about blowing anybody. You don't care about style yeah. points. One one of the things the playoff was supposed to do was get rid of style points. Yeah. And and it hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't at all. Uh, let's talk about Oklahoma and Alabama. Alabama jumps out 28 to nothing lead. Uh, this killed the ratings, by the way. Yep. Uh, which you would assume it will. Uh, neither one of these games had as many viewers as the SEC championship game. But now, it is that have. is that because of the the games themselves? Yes. Is it because of it, is it? Is, I Inter- think it's, it's a combination. It's, I think it's I think it's the date on on which the game happened. December 29th is not a usual big time college football day. I don't know that that matters, um, Gary. I don't know that anybody cares. I, I think at all. It's a Saturday, and we're watching football. It's what we're yeah. bred to do is watch football on Saturdays. So I don't think it matters at all the date. I think it was I, just. The I think the games. quality of entertainment was bad. Yeah, because at second quarter, Clemson is up what twenty three to three. Yep, ball game, and th- that's ball game. Alabama's up twenty eight to nothing, and they're up thirty one to ten at the half, and. Saban is what? What did it say? Like one hundred and four and one. No, but it does, but that stats after ir- being up by twenty one. Like it, yeah, how I'm, many, I'm with you. How many coaches have losing records with that? Like how many coaches don't have a record? No, I, I'm with you. Now most of them don't have a hundred opportunities to do that. But they, but of course, ESPN showing that, you know, going into halftime, it's like it's bad. Oh, so you're saying that there's no chance? Yeah. We, so why are we watching this? Then, then we don't need to watch anymore. Yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, Lincoln Riley, I think, showed well in this game. I didn't like I didn't like the two field goals. I thought when you're when you when they're when they have twenty eight points and you have nothing and you settle for two field goals when you have that kind of offensive explosion, you have to score touchdowns. You have yeah. to know that this field goal is worthless. It helped them cover. Yeah. The two field goals absolutely helped them cover the bet. But other than that, they did nothing. Now, if they convert those two into touchdowns, if they could just get one of the touchdowns, the if they get two touchdowns and the score stays the same, they win the game. Yeah. Now, Alabama obviously is going to play differently if they score those two touchdowns. But if you score one of those touchdowns, you're talking about a crazy close game. Yeah. And it's anybody's ball game then. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I, I agree. do think that Lincoln Riley had a had a had a good game, but he but he made two crazy conservative calls. I just on those field goals, early, just being a little afraid. Early in the game, Alabama was obviously. Uh, they they had Oklahoma's offense red. They yeah. they had understood what it was and and Kyler like to his credit adjusted well. Realized, all right, I'm gonna have to get out of the pocket. We're gonna have to call plays that that make me get out of the pocket quickly. Um, it was it was really funny early on. One of the first two drives. Kirk Herbstreit starts talking about, and you and I talked about this before, how Oklahoma's offense gets the ball out in like one and a half, yeah, two seconds. You can't, you can't pressure them. They, Alabama got to the quarterback in like 2.9 seconds, and Herbstreit is going, you held on to the ball too long. Yeah. and Less than three seconds. I'm like, less than enough. three seconds, and, and they're already on him, and he was making inaccurate throws and et cetera, et cetera. So it, it was interesting. I think Kyler showed... NFL scouts like okay he's explosive he can make plays and whatnot but this dude is like probably five foot eight and it hurt him in this spot like he he made some incredible plays incredible throws but I think it did hurt him I think I think after that game it was crystal clear he's off to play baseball yeah I I mean that's what I would do 
That's absolutely what I would do. Um, th- would we have gotten – I know that we've gone back and forth about Georgia and, and whatnot. We might if, have gotten a better – we we definitely would have gotten a better game had Georgia played either of these teams. Yeah. But I've seen Georgia play Alabama twice. Yeah. I know how to- that game ends. I, the chances that you believe Georgia is going to play a, another perfect game to start the game – Get a yeah. big lead on Alabama when nobody's done it in two well, years. Well, forget Alabama. Just look at Clemson. Well, the the like, Alabama and Clemson are pretty damn equal right yeah. now. So the the odds of them doing it a third time and then not blowing that lead, I just don't understand why they think that we're going to get a different result. Now, we would have gotten a better game. No yeah. question we would have gotten a better game because that's a that's a legit power team. Yeah, that can play with anybody. I just don't think we would have gotten an outcome that's any different. No, I'm I'm with you. Uh, most impressive player from either of these games. Who who would you go with? Trevor. Trevor. Yep. Uh, you're probably right. He was he was lights out. No, I, uh, I, I think you. If it's if it wasn't him, then. Um, Oh my God! I would go like I think my, Tua did really well. I, I like Josh is, Jacobs from Alabama. My my uh, oh God! I, oh my gosh! For who the running back for Clemson? Oh um, Travis Etienne. Etienne, yeah. That that's that he would be the other one. I mean, yeah. when oh he's when he they is super fast when it's ready to ice a game. That's yeah. the one thing that they have the ability to wear if they want to not get Trevor hurt. If if he's ever getting pressure, which he didn't get pressured a lot. But but they do have the luxury of saying, yeah. we got a dude we can just say here, and that guy, he can ice a game by getting you four or five yards of touch, and if you miss one tackle, he's gone. it's over. He is so It's fast. over, and there's nobody There's nobody in the building the catching play, him. The play where he was running away from that Notre Dame defense was unbelievable. I had to go back and rewind and, and watch it And I know times. people – and listen, we're SEC guys – SEC has always been built on the best athletes play defense. Man, I watched a lot of SEC football. I don't know anybody in the SEC that he's not running away from either. Oh, I agree. So I agree. Like a but lot I, of people you, are using that video to crap on Notre Dame. Oh, they don't belong. They don't belong because of this. Look, no, man, no, they, no, it's, they it's, ain't a whole lot of anybody. people in the world that are catching him. No, I agree much, with you. Much less playing college football. I, I agree with so you. Uh, let's, Josh let's Jacobs, careful. I thought, was was really impressive. Uh, but he has been all year. He's a junior. I think he could go in the NFL draft. He is perfect for NFL offenses now as a running back. Like, obviously, he wouldn't go high. Yeah. But, like, why hang out at Alabama for another year when you got Najee Harris in there, you've got other running backs that are coming in, they they got another five-star, in, in uh, the, the number one running back in the country is coming in. That's right. If you're Josh Jacobs – You've had to play behind Damian Harris and had to play behind Najee Harris and whatnot. Like, go to the NFL. You were a three-star that had a last-minute offer from Alabama, and you are playing as much, if not more, than the seniors, than than the guys that have been there. Yep. So, you like he he got the SEC championship MVP, our offensive MVP, whatever. Um, he is like he can catch the ball out of the backfield. He is. Did you see him crush that Oklahoma defender running into the end zone? No, I didn't. Wa- I didn't watch much of that game. Okay, yet. here's the it was, deal. It was a pretty bad game to watch. And so this was, I want to say it was like the second or third touchdown, and the Oklahoma safety is set up on like the four yard line, and Jacobs, rather than like try and dodge him or anything, lowers his shoulder and just mashes this kid, and. It, either a hamstring injury or some, his knee buckled because he was set to make the tackle and Jacobs just ran over him. This kid is like five foot nine, five ten, and weighs like 180 pounds. And he is just a workhorse. Uh, but he he's perfect for NFL offenses. I think he's probably gone after this year because if you're a three star and you are making that kind of headway and you find out that you are built for the NFL, it's time to get. Yep. It's time to go on and go. Um, anything else we need to touch on these? I think we're good on it. That's uh, that's our college football playoff recap.